the parameter that we're going to pass into or the argument that we're going to pass into our parameter inside this write output function is going to be the FAQ and it's going to hold the index that we want to show inside it so let's have a look how to do it so first of all we're going to we're not going to use any sort of strings or we're not going to use any sort of uh, double quotation because we are not referring to any strings we are referring to an array or which is also a variable so let's write the FAQ and let's add the square braces and inside the square braces we're not going to add a numeric value but rather we're going to use our parameter that we defined so this parameter is going to be URL dot FAQ and it's going to print the question and then I'm going to concatenate it with the BR tag the next thing I'm going to include is the answer using our URL dot FAQ dot answer and that's it so let's now see how this works inside our browser and I'll come back and explain this entire thing so let's save this and go back to our browser write the file name and sure it works now let me explain what happens inside this first we write the right output function and we include the FAQ variable and we in also include the URL dot FAQ parameter that we defined earlier inside the square brackets so what this is doing this is taking this URL this stores the default value of one and it is replaced when the compiler compiles this code this is replaced by the value of one what the compiler sees is that FAQ with the index of one and it shall print the question that is stored inside the index of, of one and it concatenates this and is a concatenation or it's also uh, in some other languages you'll find this concatenation is uh, referred as the plus symbol or the addition symbol but in cold fusion or in CFML this is known as the ampersand this is referred to as the ampersand symbol so we are using this concatenation symbol and we are concatenating a tag an HTML tag so we are also telling the compiler that anything that comes after this line print it on a new line so the first thing that we are doing in here we are taking the first question from the FAQ array and we are also taking the value of it and we're printing it inside this first write output function and then we're telling the compiler don't print anything after this and then you go on then we go on using another write output function this write output function does the same thing this write output function has this FAQ array and it also has this square brackets inside the square brackets this URL parameter will be replaced by this default value of one this FAQ is also a variable as we talked about earlier and this URL is a structure this URL structure contains this variable FAQ and this FAQ contains the value of one the default value of one so this default value of one will replace this entire URL dot FAQ thing this entire structure and this FAQ the compiler will interpret interpret it as FAQ one dot answer so when it interpret it as the FAQ one dot answer instead of this one this will look up inside the array and it will find that it has an index of one along with a variable of answer which has the value of programmer so it replaces this write output function and displays the value of programmer on the browser that we see here so now we're going to create a link we're going to create a link of three questions using our CF loop tag and those when the user clicks on any one of them it will show that question on the browser so how do we do it let's have a look so the first thing that we're going to do is to create the CF loop tag and close this tag now we looked at the index and list attributes of the CF loop now we are also going to look at the from attribute and we're also going to look at the to attribute 
Now we are also going to use the array length function inside our two attribute. I'll explain each of them specifically after we finish up with this code. The from will start from one and the two will end at array length. So this array length will take the array of FAQ and we are going to define an index for our CF loop. This index we are going to name it as IFAQ. And now we need the CF output tag pair. You can also use the write output using the CF script tag, but it's a matter of choice perhaps and we are going to create a link using our HTML anchor tag and this link is going to hold a query string with the variable FAQ and this variable FAQ will hold the index will hold the value that we pass as the index in our CF loop and now this will hold we're going to link, we're going to use the link on our array. We shall use the FAQ array and we shall pass not the URL this time but perhaps the index that we created for our loop IFAQ and then this will print out the question that we created as structures inside our array. And now let's save this and we are done why don't we go on using the cf dump and this cf dump will take the attribute of var and now this var will dump all the values from the faq array so we are done and why don't we check the browser what happens inside it so let's refresh this and now we have all the questions as dis displayed as dumb. I made a little mistake here. So let's solve this. I forgot to enclose the anchor tag with the pound symbols. So my compiler is literally translating it as a string. So let's also add a beer tag and let's save this and go back to our browser. And now I think you can see clearly that we have all the questions displayed in here. Why don't we add another concatenation inside our answers? So this looks more organized than the previous one. So I think you can see clearly what the CF dump has done for us. This part is due to the fact that we used CF dump and we dumped all the variables, all the values and errors in an organized manner so that it helps us to understand what is happening here. Let us understand the entire code th with the CF dump. The first thing that we did was to create an array. So we created three arrays as you can also see in here in the browser that we have three, one, two, three arrays. And each of that array has got a uh, separate distinct structures. Those structures only exist in their scope. They don't exist outside them, so outside the scope, so they don't, their variables don't clash with each other. So we have got three structures inside the three distinct numeric indexes of their arrows. These structures each have got two variables stored inside them which we know as answers and questions. Answers and questions, both of them contain the values that are strings. These string values are then used inside our write output functions. So as I explained earlier, the write output functions is outputting all the arrows, all the arrows uh, is actually outputting the array that it found that it found out as the default. The default array was one. The default index of the array was one. So it goes on printing that first index, the value of first index that we defined in our array, and then it looks what variable to print from its structure. 
when it sees that the first index exists inside the array, it goes on printing the question, then again it goes on printing the answer, the corresponding answer of that question. Now, when we go on using the CF loop, the from attribute, what it does, it checks and it ensures that we have got the first array which we numbered as Z1. Usually every array in every program starts from starts it counting from 0 and it goes on but because we can do it ourselves we can customize it ourselves so we have chosen to use 1 instead of 0 for our first array so the first index so the loop starts from the first index and it ends this two attribute tells the compiler where to end looking for the array so it ends at the array length faq so what this array length faq does it's also a function it, this function looks at the entire array. It looks at the entire array and it sees that it has got, the array has got three elements, three indexes perhaps. And as it got three indexes, this two, this entire compound symbol is then replaced by three instead of this all query looking pound symbols. So the CF loop tag takes two other additional attributes that looks for arrays and it starts from one index, the first index, and it ends at the third index. Now all of these indexes are stored inside this IFAQ index or variable that we defined. This IFAQ is now going to hold a numerical value a numerical value rather than a string value. So why don't we check on what happens when you click on each of this link. So the first link that we clicked on shows us the query string that the FAQ variable inside the query string holds the value of 1. What if we go on clicking on the third link? You can see clearly that the third link, when we click the third link, the FAQ variable holds the value of 3 and it produces all the corresponding answers and questions. So what this loop does is that this index now holds numeric values. In previous examples like the lists and like the structures, we had seen that it can also hold string or characters or entire questions. But to simplify our task, we have assigned indexes to our IFAQ variable inside our loop. Now what we do next is that we create an anchor tag using our HTML. This anchor tag gets an attribute called href which passes a square string and this square string holds a variable called FAQ. This variable will hold the value index, the index value inside our query string uh, in, that we define in our loop each time it iterates. So for the first time, this index is going to have the value of 1. So our FAQ variable inside our anchor tag is going to be replaced, is going to also hold the value of 1. And this FAQ, as we have seen, will hold the value of 1 when we click this. So after that, what we do in here is that we again go back to our array. This time, because our CF loop already has contained the index, the numerical index inside this IFAQ, we don't need to go back to our URL.FAQ parameter. We can use that IFAQ index inside our uh, array this time. So it does the same thing that we had seen earlier using our write output function. So what it does is that when we use this loop, the first index this loop is going to hold is 1. So what it does, this IFAQ is replaced by 1 and this CF output is going to output or show the first question of the first index of the array on the browser. So when the loop finishes this first index, uh, showing the first index values, it goes on and on again and it ends at the third array. So the next time it iterates, this index is going to hold the value of 2. So what this index is going to hold is like saying that this IFAQ that is going to hold 1 at first, then after it iterates, it's going to hold the value of 2 and this one is going to be erased. And it's going to have this 2 when it iterates the second time. And the third time when it goes on iterating, 
this i f a q index this i f a q perhaps the variable is going to hold the value of 3 and now when it reaches this 3 the loop is going to stop and it's going to print all these links on the page that we see now and every time we click on them this passes a numeric value inside the query string which gets stored inside this FAQ this FAQ URL query string and this is then passed to this parameter and then it prints that parameter that parameter then gets passed inside this uh, write output function and it prints the question along with it, along with its corresponding answer